For decades, India's naval power has revolved around conventional aircraft carriers, but INS Vishal represents something far more ambitious, a leap toward true blue water dominance. This isn't just another warship. It's a floating fortress designed to tip the balance of power in the Indian Ocean, deter rivals, and challenge the dominance of larger navies like China and the United States. So how did this mega project begin? And what makes INS Vishal different from anything India has ever attempted? Let's dive into the origins and unravel the plans behind the supercarrier that could reshape maritime strategy across an entire region. The concept of INS Vishal emerged after India commissioned INS Vikramaditya and began building INS Vikrant. Indian defense planners realized that having one or even two carriers wasn't enough in a region increasingly contested by China's growing naval presence. China launched aircraft carriers like Liaoning and Shandong and began constructing more advanced ones. India needed a counterweight, not just a carrier but a symbol of deterrence. INS Vishal was envisioned as the largest and most capable carrier India has ever considered, around 65,000 tons in displacement, compared to the roughly 45,000 tons of INS Vikrant. This massive jump in scale signals India's ambition to operate at the level of global powers that use supercarriers as strategic tools, not just defensive platforms. Unlike India's current carriers, which rely on stowbar systems, short takeoff ramps, and arrested landings, INS Vishal is designed for Katobar, the same launch and recovery system used by US and French supercarriers. This would allow India to operate heavier, more sophisticated aircraft with greater range and payload. The ship is expected to carry up to 55 to 60 aircraft at once, combining fighter jets, AWACS platforms and drones in a unified strike package. The dimensions and layout would give it nearly limitless mission flexibility, from power projection and sea denial to rapid response operations far from Indian shores. One of the most groundbreaking elements proposed for INS Vishal is the integration of EMALS, Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. Traditional steam catapults are bulky, maintenance heavy, and limit the type of aircraft that can be deployed. EMALS, currently pioneering aboard the US Gerald R. Ford class carriers, allows quieter, smoother, and more effective launches with far less stress on the airframes. India has been in talks with the United States to explore technology transfer or co-development, which would represent unprecedented defense cooperation. If successful, INS Vishal could deploy aircraft previously beyond the reach of Indian carriers, including heavier AEWNC platforms crucial for airborne surveillance and command. INS Vishal's air wing is envisioned as a powerful hybrid of manned fighters and autonomous systems. Potential manned aircraft include the French Rafale M, the US FA-18 Super Hornet, or a navalized variant of India's proposed twin-engine deck-based fighter, TBF. Each brings deep strike, anti-ship, and multi-role capabilities. But perhaps the most transformative part of INS Vishal's air wing would be its use of carrier-based drones for reconnaissance and swarm combat roles. Unmanned combat aerial vehicles could operate in high-risk environments, relay targeting data, jam enemy systems, or even strike independently, all while extending the ship's reach without risking pilot lives. With emails, India could also deploy heavier UAVs and future stealth platforms. One of the biggest questions surrounding INS Vishal is whether it will be conventionally powered or nuclear-driven. A nuclear carrier can remain at sea for over 20 years without refueling, offering unmatched deployment duration and range. It frees up deck space since it carries no massive fuel reserves and provides abundant power for AMALs, radar arrays, and next-gen weaponry. 
But nuclear propulsion is expensive, politically sensitive, and requires specialized infrastructure and training. Some Indian officials support a nuclear design to future-proof the ship for decades, while others propose starting with conventional propulsion and upgrading over time. The final decision will directly affect cost, timeline, and long-term capability. NS Vishal isn't just about the Indian Ocean. Its operational reach would enable India to coordinate with allies, participate in international patrols, and join carrier group exercises with nations like the US, Japan, France, and Australia under the Quad and other strategic partnerships. Its presence in contested waters like the South China Sea or the Strait of Hormuz would send geopolitical ripples. With its advanced capabilities, India could shape regional navies, offer humanitarian assistance in disasters, and respond to crises faster than ever before. To survive in modern naval warfare, carriers need strong defensive systems. INS Vishal is expected to integrate layered defenses, long-range air defense missiles, close-in weapon systems, anti-submarine capabilities, and electronic warfare suites. Escort ships like destroyers, frigates, and submarines would form a carrier strike group to protect it from enemy aircraft, hypersonic missiles, mines, and torpedoes. Advances in electronic countermeasures would allow INS Vishal to blind incoming threats, while drones could serve as mobile sensors and decoys during battle. Beyond military strength, INS Vishal is a technological milestone. It would push India's shipbuilding industry into a new era, accelerating development in metallurgy, propulsion, naval aviation, and radar systems. Building such a vessel demands new dry docks, manufacturing chains, software integration, and thousands of skilled workers. This project could create entire ecosystems of defense manufacturing, benefiting other sectors and making India less dependent on foreign suppliers. Even with political backing, construction could take over a decade. First, finalizing the design means resolving propulsion type, emails integration, combat systems, and the air wing. Then come budget approvals, technology transfers, and domestic production agreements. If work proceeds smoothly, the keel might be laid this decade, with launch sometime in the 2030s. Full operational capability would come even later, possibly in the late 2030s or early 2040s. Critics call it too slow, but supporters argue that a supercarrier built to last for half a century can't be rushed. There are still uncertainties, shifting budgets, changing governments, technical obstacles, and strategic recalculations. But India's long-term naval vision is unmistakable. The Navy has consistently stated that carrier power is essential for maritime dominance and crisis response. Whether INS Vishal enters service in 15 or 20 years, the doctrine behind it already shapes regional planning. Every rival must now factor in the possibility of a fully operational Indian supercarrier by the time today's young officers become admirals. NS Vishal is more than a warship. It is a declaration of intent. It represents India's move from regional defense to strategic projection, from coastal protection to oceanic influence. It signals that India isn't just reacting to rising powers, it's preparing to lead in its own maritime sphere. If completed with the capabilities envisioned, INS Vishal could redefine naval strategy across the Indo-Pacific for decades to come, reshaping alliances, deterring aggression, and securing vital trade routes. If you're fascinated by military breakthroughs, rising naval powers, and game-changing technology like INS Vishal, make sure you don't miss what's coming next. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment on which future warship or defense system you want us to cover. Your support helps bring more deep-dive content like this straight to you.